Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Hi everyone and welcome to today's episode. This marks the third week I think I've been in quarantine for uh, on my property and I've been trying to make the best of it. In the last few weeks I've taken the time to basically polish and clean every single little car that I've had sitting around here and so now I have uh, everything shined up and everything looking good uh, and I'm running out of projects to do. So I'm getting a little bit stir crazy but we're going to find some things to keep ourselves occupied with today. So follow along as I get busy do a minor restoration on an old clock, and uh, I don't know, just generally have some fun around the house. Stay tuned. Are you guys putting away dishes all on your own? Jason, only I am. Uh, looks I'm like the they're helping. It's hot. Okay, honey, so while you guys were busy playing, these giant boxes showed up. This is a couple days ago, I guess. But what do you think is inside? Um, toy plush in this one, because it's not like in the Oh, did you read? Okay, so it's a whole bunch of them, right? Okay, well, let's open, let's open it up and see what's inside. Is this just one piece one? Um, well, it's a big cardboard box. You remember when I went to the toy fair in New York? Oh no, what did you do now? Well, I placed an order and I totally forgot about it. And since we haven't been able to leave the house, they shipped them to our house instead of to the store. I'm gonna crack it open and we're gonna see. This would be a good box. These are good boxes for a fort. Do you guys wanna use these for a fort yes. later? I'm taking this. Nope, I'm taking the bottom one. Okay. All right, <laughs> let me get some scissors. You guys gonna open it up? Why are you so excited to do this? Oh, it is this one. Oh, it's huge ones. Okay, <laughs> you want to take it out? What did you do, Dad? Oh, did you cut that one? Dad? What the heck? <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you? What the heck? You know. So hey, we gotta take the plastic off so you can see it. Hey, Steven. Are my dad jokes unbearable? Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> let's see, how big is that thing compared to you, Abigail? Same height. Same height. No. Abigail's much shorter. <laughs> oh, do you like it? I don't think Chewy likes it too much. I will make it. Let's go John. chase it. <laughs> John so Bear? Soft. Is it soft? It would make more right. sense if it was in yeah. here. Let's see what Chewy thinks. Turn it around so Chewy can see. <laughs> well, I mean, if you no, I don't. Chewie looks suspicious of it. Wait, <laughs> get it, get it. Wait, don't attack him. Look, Chewie looks. <laughs> Just let him get it. Chewie, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, apparently. Um. It's like a huggy thing. I did. I wasn't trying to uh, make the bear crazy. Or make the dog crazy then. The bear. Yeah. Ruff. I mean. He's trying to make the bear crazy. Look, he's skittering. Okay, let's put him in the corner and see if Chewie does anything. You think Chewie's gonna like it if I give the bear one of his favorite toys? Okay, you want that? Look, like he's super jealous. Wait, wait, drop it right next to the bear and see if he's brave enough to run up to it. This is one one of many reasons why we can't have a bear, a real bear in the house. Bum, 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 bum. What's in box number two? Uh, oh. It is the same height as that. Oh, that one is. Stop it! Is that what you would do if you had a pet giraffe? Nope, he's mine. Okay, we gotta put it, let's see what Chewie thinks of this one. He's very suspicious of these activities over here. Uh, well that only took seconds until Abigail crawled inside of the box. What's the tape? <laughs> no, we're gonna, we would never, I said no refunds when we had her. This is my oh. size. That's your size? Are you lying down there? Oh yeah. Okay, well now that the kids are both occupied, at least two of them are anyhow, uh, you okay there? It looks like your box fell over. 
Why do you sound like Minnie me in there? Okay, you all right? Okay, they'll be fine. I'm gonna go upstairs and work on that clock. Now I was searching in our basement and I found my boxes of spare clocks. Why am I keeping around boxes of broken clock parts? Uh, because occasionally I get one that needs a little bit of repair and I use parts. Uh, so today we're gonna try and at least make one good clock from, uh, from a bad one. The box that I have in question here is full of what are PAM advertising clocks. They have a glass dome, they have a nice advertising face, and uh, generally um, they're quite collectible. Now certain clocks uh, can be worth more depending upon what your advertisement is. Some of these however are mismatched or not working and we're going to remedy that. I have here a couple uh, of parts clocks that uh, I did a little rebuilding on and I got the motors working good. Um, but you can see there's no face, there's no glass, um, and it uh, basically doesn't look like much right now. So to fix that, I'm going to use this as a donor clock. Now you might say, okay, well that one has a face and it does have the dome. Why on earth would you part it out if it looks like it's already ticking? Well, um, it's not meant to be a ticking time clock like that, it's actually meant to uh, have a nice, smooth working electric motor. But what's happened here is that someone has replaced the movement of this clock with a more modern style, and it's not original anymore. Um, that is the proper mount, the proper uh, clock mechanism. This one has been uh, taken apart and modified, but I am gonna use the glass and the ring off of it, and um, we're gonna build a clock. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to dismantle this clock. It's just held on with a little bit of wire. This would have had a clip at one point, but clearly that's broken. That's pretty common with these clocks. Once I get the uh, face off, like so, then you reveal your glass dome and uh, underneath the glass is the clock face. All right, here is our worn out face. And what this is, it's a piece of circular glass and on the reverse is a silkscreen printed image. So when it lights up, you get an idea of what that used to say. Unfortunately, when they wear like this, there isn't really a great way to repaint them because they're printed on the back side of the glass. Oh, when they get worn out, they're kind of done. But we'll keep that around anyway, because that's still a nice original piece and it's good early advertising for Westinghouse. What I have ordered on Yield Interweb is a new replacement PAM clock, and it's the same thing. It's glass, it's a uh, silk screen on the back. These are typically, after you get them shipped, around $100 or so, but um, a working clock could be worth three to 400, so if you have parts clocks like I do, um, it's still a good investment. And uh, in terms of depreciation, I mean, you wanna let people know that it's a replacement face when you sell it, because you definitely don't wanna try and uh, trick anybody. But um, it's perfectly fine if your clock was completely worn out and looked bad to put a replacement face in. And a lot of times I'll give a um, genuine face along with it. But we're just going to give this a good tidy up so it'll uh, be a good looking, good working clock again. Here is the replacement mechanism that somebody put in. Not a, not a high quality piece. Uh, you can see the original must have had some trouble and somebody removed it. I'm debating whether to use that base. I may just use this one since it's pretty much all ready to go. I think that's what I'll do. Give a, give a bit of a clean up here before we get started. This thing is pretty gross. I'm gonna work at this for a little while here and get this all cleaned up. Because we don't want any of that dust in our clock. May as well clean it while it's all apart, right? And if you have a clock like this, you want to know what the age is. A lot of times it's stamped on the movement. So you can see this one, January 25th, 1949. That's a good early post-war clock. And that'll be a perfect match for the new orange crush face that we've picked up. And the original bulbs were tiny, just like that. I've decided to go with a slightly larger bulb so it spreads the light more evenly. But I'm picking an LED because LED does not burn very hot at all. Um, the problem is if you get too warm of a light bulb, it's going to melt the graphics on the back. And a lot of times you find these clocks and they have two burn marks on both sides where the bulbs were, where somebody put a bulb in that was too intense 
for the clock and it ruins it. So these LED bulbs should put off just the right amount of light and they should also stay nice and cool and not destroy our new graphic. Okay, just laying the new orange crush glass down. You wanna make sure that your six o'clock is lined up really nicely with the, uh, with the dial on the bottom here, otherwise your clock's gonna be sitting crooked. Um, before I put the glass dome back on though, I've got a Windex it, clean it up, and then uh, we'll start the reassembly and try it out. Okay, I've got the hands in place. I'm just gonna plug it in and make sure it's working all right before I end up putting the uh, dome on. So let's give this a try. Okay, we have light, we have movement. It's time to finish it up. There we go, one complete orange crush clock. Let's give this a try. There we go. Yep, second hand's moving. One down, I have a whole box full to go, but that's at least one down. Since I got the orange crush clock working, I thought I would build a couple others. So we've got the SO clock going. Um, and now some of these shells that I have, um, some have working motors, others have the right size of frame or chassis that I need. Uh, in this case, this clock works. However, the cord, where is it now? has no end. Now I could just go out and get a, uh, a new plug and screw it on there and make that work. I can't leave the house right now because I'm still in quarantine. So I had an extension cord, a new one that I purchased. I'm gonna use that um, to basically cut it down and make a new cord, a new cable for this clock. The extension cord I'm using, well, it was a whole $2 at the dollar store. I guess the uh, almost dollar store because that was two bucks. But uh, very simple, we're just gonna cut the end off here, strip the wires back and put it all back together. Bing, bang, boom. I am showing Abigail and apparently Chewy what is going on here. We just stripped down the wires on the old extension cord. And now I was showing Abigail that these are morettes that hold the wires all together. You can see other people have wound them together. So we have to remember what wires go in what order. So I don't screw up. I'm actually going to cut this because I don't need it anymore. And we're gonna get that completely taken off of the clock and uh, we'll run our new cable through. We're gonna run our new one through and we're gonna put a little bit of a knot in it just so it can't get pulled out, just to be safe. Kind of like that. And the reason we do that, Abigail, is so if somebody accidentally pulls on it like that, it's not gonna pull all your wiring apart and cause it to short circuit or anything. Um, so we're gonna do this one at a time and replace the old with the new. So one of these will power one bulb, one will power the other, one will power the clock, and the other is the power coming in from the actual house or, or outlet itself. Once you kind of have them twisted together, you're gonna to put the morette back on and then we'll do the other side. Okay, those are all in. Now comes the big test. Plug it in. Let's see. There we go. That was it. Rest my finger. Yeah, I can feel the clock turning. So it should be all good now. The other thing that I have to do today is try and get the door panel in the Alfa Romeo off so I can access the window regulator. Right now, the window isn't going up and down, and that's pretty much one of the only things that's preventing the car from a full pass on its safety inspection. Uh, the problem is it's a really weird system. When I open the window up, I was expecting, you know, your typical, usually it's a bar with two little rollers that go up and down kind of on a lever. Instead, they've got this crazy pulley system in here, which I've never seen quite like this on a vehicle before. It's uh, bolted to the window, it comes back and around and up and down, and it's got this little system in here. Uh, it's way over complicated for what it needs to be, and it doesn't work that great, especially if something fails on it. But now I have to figure out how to basically restring and rethread this whole thing, and I'm not looking forward to it. One of the problems I have with the car is that the little pulley inside here that's meant to, uh, well, take the cable, is broken. So it's falling off consistently. Um, in fact, you can kind of see shards of it in there that have broken. Uh, to get that piece out, I'm gonna have to loosen these bolts off and remove the whole assembly. The other part is that the window crank um, is no longer engaging, which means it's probably stripped and not working at all. Uh, this whole system's gonna have to come out, but I'm gonna start with this lower panel here so I have the pulley in place. 
Okay, replace the broken pulley, put a little oil on it so it should spin nice. That one was all right. I'm gonna put that back in. Old mechanism is dangling there. These pieces go up inside here to two pulleys. Well, this one on the bottom goes through the bottom pulleys. I just have to remember how that all goes. Luckily, uh, somebody on the interweb did a nice little drawing to help show how this thing goes, but um, it's always good to uh, take a video like I'm doing right now in case you screw up completely and can't remember. But uh, it looks like all I have to do is just unbolt it off of the window itself and this thing should just pour right off. Um, are you on my creeper? Uh, ah, okay, well, whatever. I guess that just proves that sometimes it's fun to come hang out with Dad in the garage. <laughs> okay, here's a big test to see if I did it. Yep, all back in place. I still don't like this system, but at least it's working now. Well, that's about it. I've got a working window in the car. It's, uh, just about ready for uh, inspection. We got a couple clocks fixed and had some fun with the kids. So thanks for watching today's episode, guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.